death grip. I just don't want to lose the dog, okay? <laughs> this is not a good idea. So if I'm here now, and I'm talking to you, and the dog lunged, what would happen to my body? Well, you're all about to talk. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I still have the dog. But yeah, that's well, not a good idea for me, but I won't lose the dog. But the dog might drag me across the yard. <laughs> so, and I have had some instances when I, because it was going into water, and I wasn't willing to go there. Or going in the middle of the street, and I knew I could stop it. Yeah. The dog always came right back. But I'm not willing to hurt myself in the process. All right, so here's your baby hole. Never put it around here because, and I know that you don't know this, but I could, we could talk for hours, and I could name all of the people with all of the injuries that have come in, and, and then you'd be like, oh, okay. Then. If you fall, your reflexes do this, and you will be caught, and then you will be dragged. It's not safe, just like anything else. Just like a seatbelt has a button to release, right? On a horse, you can jump off. You have to be able to jump off if you need to, okay? So around here, then I decide how much leash do I want the dog to have? It doesn't matter. I have been known to walk puppies and dogs on 20 feet because I don't like stopping. So if I do 20 feet, out, in, out, in, I don't necessarily give them the whole 20 feet, but the puppy has much more area to sniff and smell without me constantly having to correct it and stop it, which leads to frustration. So it doesn't matter. It could be two feet, four feet, six feet, 100 feet. I don't care. The rules are the same. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I want this puppy this close to me in this environment. So then I'm going to put that right here in my hand. And then I'm going to anchor it to my body because I'm standing still. And now this puppy can do exactly what it was doing before, and it settles them. Whereas, if it goes like this, it amps them up. They keep trying to get farther and farther away. It's like putting gas in their fire. One more pull, maybe I'll get there. One more pull. And it's fair to the dog to say, no, <laughs> there's no pulling. You can't do it. All right, then, if this hand is comfortable and the dog pulls, my reflex grabs it. And I know this, so I don't need to grip it like a... Because in all reality, if you grip and the dog pulls, you have to believe me, you release the tension and regain it. Your muscle is fatigued. It can't clench tighter. It has to release to clench again. So you're actually safer with loose hands and let your brain do its work. So then here, my elbows are bent. If the dog pulls, I'm going to use my bicep and my leg. I'm not going to do this because this gives them two more feet and leads to shoulder, lower back, you name it, injuries. Okay? This is the kiss of death for leash walking. You see the second arm come in? This one never moved. So this is, look, let me try again. This is how they learn. It's terribly sad, isn't it? She doesn't know. I can't get away. Right? But it's also fairness. There's no doubt you're attached to me right now, and that's the way it's going to be. Okay? So now when I walk, no matter who I am, no matter what my experience, if I keep my arms still, I fix all of my bad habits. Okay? Because y'all have bad habits. Really bad habits. Because you're all thinking about everything you're thinking about instead of just walking the dog. And thinking about the level that your dog is at. All right? We're always down the road, down the road. We think... If I let this dog pull me today, it's going to be ruined forever. Nothing is ruined in one day. All right, so watch what I'm going to do here. See the clasp? That's tight. This is loose. See, all you have to do is see it. Nothing else matters. So watch what I'm going to do. Good baby. Keep my eye on my dog. Thank 